Hello there. Today I want to share with you guys uh, how I prevent hobby burnout. Uh, obviously you can tell by um, you know, my, my layout here and several of my videos um, that I, I've got quite a few hobbies. So a couple of the real big ones of course are, uh, you know, I collect uh, these you know, electronic lightsabers, uh, I paint uh, and play uh, various Warhammer miniatures, um, you know, every now and again I'll, I'll get some Lego, some really cool Lego set. Uh, costumes used to be a really big hobby of mine. I've got a Mario costume, a Jedi costume. I've made several others when I was in high school and college. Um, and of course, you know, this YouTube channel itself is a hobby. Uh, and so as you can imagine, I'm, I'm constantly kind of juggling different projects and that sort of thing. And what I wanted to share with you guys is how I actually prevent that burnout. Because it, it definitely happens to me. Um, I actually, this will be my first video in I think three months, and I think that's the longest I've gone without a video um, since I started the channel. Um, and that's just because, you know, I've had a lot going on and, uh, well, I've had a lot going on in my personal life. Uh, you know, all, all good stuff, of course, but, um, you know, not really a lot happening with uh, lightsabers and, um, you know, well, I have been doing some things with miniatures, you know, that painting takes up a lot of time too. So I'm going to go over like specific examples of some of the things that I do to prevent the burnout. Um, specifically, I'm going to focus on the miniatures and the lightsabers. Um, but this should be able to apply to a, a lot of different uh, hobbies that you might have. So the first thing that you want to do when you start to realize that, uh, you know, you, you pick up that paintbrush uh, and, you're, and you're painting the mini and it just seems like a chore. Or, uh, you know, with, with your lightsabers, you know, you, you want to get out and practice doing some spinning. And, um, you know, just you get that, that voice in the back of your mind that's saying, I don't really want to do that. Um, so once a hobby starts to feel like a chore, that's when you kind of have, you just pump the brakes and say, okay, this is supposed to be for fun. Let me, let me take a break. And that could be for a day or two, a week, you know, however long you need that break to be. Take that time. You know, just, just put everything aside uh, and then, um, you know, be, be able to come back and be refreshed. Another thing that I like to do is to explore different uh, aspects of the hobby. So, of course, uh, when it comes to lightsabers, um, one of my biggest um, draws is actually, uh, you know, customizing the hilts, uh, collecting them, of course. I do enjoy spinning, which I can't really do in this limited setup right now, but um, but there's there's other aspects to it that uh, I know a lot of guys that, that actually will duel with their lightsabers. Uh, to that effect, I, I highly recommend a, a baselit lightsaber uh, like this. It's just, uh, it's just a, basically a really bright flashlight shining up in a hollow tube. Uh, this one in, actually has the lights in the blade, which some can technically duel with. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty sturdy, but it's a lot more, this blade is a lot more expensive. So I personally don't risk it. Um, so, you know, guys that, that will go and, and duel each other with their lightsabers, um, you know, I recommend getting a blade, base of lightsaber. So if for lightsabers, you know, you, you, you know, decked out for the, the, the Neo pixel, you know, scrolling effect, lights in the blade, flickering, you know, all those bells and whistles, um, but you want to act explore a different aspect of the hobby, get a base lightsaber and, and try to duel. Um, another thing that you can do is, is customize your hilt. Uh, a lot of people like to get just the replica lightsabers, uh, you know, ones that actually look like the ones from the movies. Uh, obviously, I like to, you know, really customize mine. You know, I did this this katana wrap on, on both of my sabers. Um, I, you know, I did those myself. Um, you know, I glued these, uh, these gems on the buttons and I'll actually get to that in a little bit. Um, you know, experimenting with, with different stuff. So I'll show an example of that in a little bit. Um, but then, yeah, it, another thing that you can do is just uh, watch YouTube videos. There's a lot of, of YouTube channels out there with lightsaber content. Um, so obviously I have some content too, but uh, before I started, there were a lot of other videos that I watched to really get in uh, into the hobby and kind of understand the different intricacies. And and so that, that could be it. You know, if you're, you know, tired of... of spinning or, or, you know, you haven't been able to duel someone else in a while, then just watch some YouTube videos. Um, when it comes to miniatures, um, one of the things that I like to do is, uh, of course, there's, there's very uh, different aspects of that. There's painting, 
Uh, there's actually playing. Uh, you can do different conversions and stuff. So, uh, for example, this is a uh, Eldar Wraith Guard, but I uh, have added some, some Tau bits and various other things and painted him uh, like a Gundam. Uh, and so that, that's a conversion. Uh, it also kind of helps me get inspired to, to do some painting. Um, another thing that you can do if, if you're getting burnt out with miniatures is you can actually focus on terrain. So this particular piece here, move this, that guy out of the way. So I actually recently built this and I have it modular. It had some extra parts that I just uh, put little magnets on here so that I can take off this top part. Uh, put these little parts on here, and now you've got two perfectly modular parts. Um, and this is also great for taking pictures. You know, I, I will often, um, you know, now I can set that up and actually have this be a background uh, for my miniature. So, you know, taking a break, buying a piece of terrain, uh, setting that up, uh, it's a different painting experience than, than the actual miniatures. Uh, another thing that you can do um, is try to play like different kinds of games. So instead of just your regular, uh, you know, you build an army, your opponent builds an army, you could try little things like uh, with these. These are actually Adeptus Titanicus Knights. So I painted this guy like the Power Rangers Megazord. Uh, here's a uh, Voltron. Let me see if I can get that to focus a little bit better. No, I don't think it's going to. Um, but, uh, so, so these are, of course, the smaller versions. You know, the normal knights are, are, you know, about this big, you know, probably closer to this guy's size. And, um, what I've done with these guys, instead of actually playing the, the Titanicus, uh, I, I converted these Wraith Guard into Wraith Knights. So a little bit different. And my son and I will actually play on a small board, like a two, uh, two foot by two foot, instead of your, your traditional size board. And we'll use the rules for the big knights for those guys. And the only thing that's different is instead of using inches, we'll use centimeters. So it scales down. So we're able to knock out a, a, what should be a really big game because you get, you know, three of these knights versus three of these other guys. That's like a, a normal big size game, but doing it with those smaller models on a smaller table allows us to kind of knock that out. And, and it, so it's, it, you know, experiment with different uh, kinds of ways to play, uh, and that can kind of refresh your, you know, maybe get your creative juices flowing and, and get you back and maybe inspire you to be like, hey, you know, now that we're doing that, that's, you know, going to give us an idea to, you know, paint up these other models to do some, some really cool little uh, game that we made up. The other thing is uh, I recommend is to set your goals small. Uh, so this guy, for example, uh, even though he's, he's quite big in terms of miniatures, um, because he's big and there's a lot of parts to him, I've decided to take it slow. So I did the um, torso first, uh, then I did this belt um, tabard assembly, and then each leg one at a time, and then currently working on the arms. So I don't really have much going, but I just disassembled him, um, and I'm taking him one, one step at a time. And the parts that I'm not ready to work on, I put those out of sight. That helps me focus on just the one piece that I'm working on uh, so that I can get it done and, you know, I don't have this big pile of, you know, pile of shame uh, when it comes to all these models that are waiting to, to be painted and, you know, assembled and painted. Uh, and so I, I like to keep those things out of sight and just focus on, you know, smaller things. So, you know, when I get the arms done, I'll attach them to this and then I'll move on to the shoulder pads, uh, various, various things like that. The other thing I recommend is to experiment with new stuff. So you'll notice on this guy, on his chest and knee, I've got these eyeballs. Uh, and that actually did not come on the model. Um, I actually ordered uh, some of these dragon eyes from uh, eBay. And they, they sell them in different sizes. I believe these are uh, 12, mil 12 millimeters. They've got eights, tens, fourteens. Uh, so various different sizes. Um, it's just, you know, a little craft thing and, you know, I was able to add it on that, and I think it looks really good. I do the same thing with the lightsabers, uh, like I mentioned before. Uh, you know, I, I attach those gems there to um, to all the different buttons, because this one in particular, each button is associated with a different color. So I wanted to have those gems to really tell me what, what color it's going to be. And, and that's just what, you know, went to the dollar store and, you know, got a, a little thing of, of gems. Uh, easy, easy as that. Um, I also use this Molotol Chrome, 
which, oh, there we go, uh, this liquid chrome, which actually I've used on uh, lightsabers and miniatures. Um, I, I don't have the lightsabers in here. Oh, actually I do. Um, so this, this little groove here, I don't think you're going to see it, but uh, I, I just put a little bit of chrome in there. And for those little grooves, uh, adding chrome to something that's either black or a dark gray or even gold looks great. Um, really any color, but, but having that little chrome accent really makes it pop. I've, I've used the chrome on his armor uh, as well. So, um, you know, experiment with different, uh, different materials. Uh, to, to kind of liven up your ho hobby experience. Um, another thing is you, you can try something completely different. Uh, I actually, um, my, my son got me this for Christmas and it was really nice. Uh, at the time I was kind of um, not really in, I didn't really have any project uh, that I was working on. So this was nice to just kind of sit, work on this for a couple of hours, uh, get something completed and that, you know, really helped to boost my, my morale to, to keep going. But um, you know, if you guys have anything to add, you know, put it in the comment. I, I really hope that uh, this has been helpful for you guys and, and you're able to, to get out there and, um, you know, get back to whatever project you're at or, you know, maybe even give you the confidence to take a break. Maybe you've been pushing yourself too hard and, and this video was enough to push you to say, hey, maybe I need to take a break and then I'll get back, back at it and I'll be even better than ever. I hope you guys enjoy and may the force be with you.